Hi everybody, Nick Hyatt here, and I'm going to walk you through how to set up our products from the terrain domain in Maya for Redshift. Our new products are now using UDEMs, which means we get way more resolution. It's just one more checkbox you have to check, but no worries, I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Cool, so you bought our product, you just load in the OBJ, and we'll get a material on that. And we're going to do this in Redshift, so we're going to make a Redshift material. And let's just sign that guy right there. Okay, boom. Alrighty, so now we got our, our model in here. We have our redshift material. So let's go ahead and click on our color under our diffuse over here. And we're gonna click on file. And we provide you with 8K and a 1K version. Uh, obviously the 8K looks much better, but for the test, I'm just gonna do the 1K, so it'll load faster. <clears throat> and uh, you just pick our color maps right here. And uh, if you'll notice, we have multiple color maps now, which is using the UDIMs. So this way we get to have way more texture resolution in, in all of our maps, our bump, our spec, our displacement. So it's just gonna be a lot more fidelity. Okay, so what you do, you just pick the very first one right here, just click on that file, click open, right? And then right here under our UV tiling mode, all you do is you pick zero based UVs. And this, we're kicking out these out of ZBrush, so you just pick the zero based or ZBrush version, and boom, click generate preview. And what this does, this essentially assigns each UV uh, or each image to its own UV space here in Maya. And now we're going to load our texture, and that's it. So now as you can see, with just one click, we loaded all these texture maps, all the different UDIM maps in there. So just make sure right here in your, uh, in your material, <coughs> under your redshift, uh, or sorry, under your UV tiling, you have zero based UVs set, and that will hook your UDIMs up automatically. Super cool. All right, so now the same thing applies for obviously all of your maps. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit our reflection map here for our specular map. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pick the first one of the group, right? Gonna click open and then just make sure I pick zero base ZBrush. And that is it for that one. Cool, so now let's go ahead and let's, uh, expand this here so we can see more of it in our material or in our material library here. <clears throat> okay, so now let's go ahead and make us a redshift uh, bump map. I can get that little window open there. There we go. Bump map. So just click on bump map, click on redshift over here, click on shader, click on bump map, boom, there it is. You just drag this guy into the bump input, no problem. And then same story, we're just gonna apply our image. So we're gonna apply a file and click right here and we pick our bump map, boom. And again, make sure to pick zero base ZBrush. Okay, so not a problem. All right, so now we have our bump, we have our color, we have our spec. We're only missing one thing, and that's our displacement. Obviously this model is, you know, is, is very clean, very uh, low res, very user friendly. And the way that we get our detail back on this is through displacement maps. So, you know, if, if you were looking at these models, you're like, oh, there's not a lot of detail. Well, that's because all that detail is in the displacement map. So we can have an easy model that's used, uh, that's, you know, uh, doesn't take a ton of memory to load, right? But we still have all that fidelity in our map. Cool, so let's go to our material that we want to add the displacement map onto. Right, and we're going to go to our far right node over here in our material, um, our, in our hyper shade rather. Okay, so we're going to click on this node, and you see right here we have a displacement map. We can put it in there, but if we put it in our redshift tab down here under redshift displacement shader right here, this will give us a couple more redshift options uh, that you know we may need. Okay, so now same story. We're just going to pick right here. We're going to pick our file, and we're going to pick our displacement map. and just pick the first one, and that's the one. Okay, now it's gonna load these. These are a little bit bigger files, because they're TIFF files, which because they're 16-bit, so they're gonna take a little bit longer to load. Okay, but now same story. We need to make sure we pick our UV tiling mode to zero base ZBrush. Okay, so now that's it. Now we have our color assigned, we have our spec assigned, our bump assigned, and our displacement assigned. Now there's just one more thing to do to our model to get it to work in redshift with displacement. Okay, so uh, just for the difference here, you can see uh, uh, on the redshift tab over here, on our, when we select our model, we go to our shape node, and we go to our redshift tab, we have two check marks here, tessellation and displacement, right? So you need to check both, you need to enable both of these, and this will have you, uh, this will allow your displacement to appear in your render. 
So if you ever see this, like, oh, hey, my displacement's not on, it's because you haven't enabled it for the object itself in the Redshift tab. Cool. All right, so now we have this set up. We have all of our maps assigned. We have our UDEMs or our UV tile method picked. So now let's switch our renderer to Redshift. We're going to create a light. And let's just pick an HDRI map really quick. All righty. And let's open up our Redshift render view. Okay, so the first thing you notice, we got some funky stuff going on, right? Don't freak out. This is how it's supposed to be. Essentially, the way when you have displacement maps, it kind of differs from program to program what your values need to be, right? So in our case, we can see obviously our values here are a little funky. It's make, making some crazy uh, uh, extrusions there. So no big deal. Uh, we're just going to go to our, our hypershade. We're going to click on our displacement node. Once I can get it in the view there, there we go. So click on our displacement node and you see our scale is set to 1. Okay, watch what happens when we set our displacement now to 0.1. Boom, there we go. It's much smaller, it's much closer where it should be. So we're just going to play with this value. 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and we can kind of find where it starts to, you know, really kind of freak out. And this will be different from, you know, uh, rendering software to rendering software. But typically with Redshift, our values are kind of close to 0.1, 0 0.01 sometimes. It really depends. Um, it's case by case sometimes, and sometimes with the scale of your scene, etc. So anyway, uh, when your displacement comes through like this and you're noticing some funky results, right? Just make sure that you uh, you change your scale, right? Let's put it on 0.2. There we go. Now I'm getting a little bit of tooth. Okay, so now let's do a couple more things really quickly. So let's just go and uh, adjust a couple more values. We're going to click on our main material and we're going to go to our reflection tab and we're going to adjust our weight and our roughness to be a little less specular, so there's a little bit less um, a highlight on this guy, so it's not qu quite so uh, reflective in the in the highs, and the reflection from this light here, and uh, that's pretty much it. So now we have our specular set the way we like it. We have our displacement map going on. We have our color map going on, and let me uh, cut this background off so you can see this a little bit better. And let's go ahead and increase my resolution here, just so we can get a better result. Might learn to press render. That usually helps. And it's cooking right now. Okay. Cool. So that's it. So now let's uh, let's just adjust our, our bump a little bit as well. Let's go to our bump map right here. Let's put it to let's put it to one because I know one's too much, right? We'll give it a little tooth, and then let's go back to point one, maybe point two. And you know your these values will be changed uh, based off your orient your distance from. Uh, your object from your camera, <clears throat> etc. So just you know, get used to tweaking your values. That's part of the thing you'll need to do every time. But the simple part is to apply UDEMs. It's really simple. Just pick your color. Boom. You apply your color. Just make sure to pick your tiling mode set to a ZBrush, uh, the zero method, and then do that for each one: color, bump, spec, and displacement. And then if ever your object does not have displacement on it, make sure to check these boxes. So let's see it without it really quick. So you notice when I when I uncheck, when, when, without this, this is very low low polygon, and I check these guys, and enable or sorry, enable both of them, and then boom, now my displacement pops up. So, and then now we just adjust our values. Displacement is probably a little too high at 0.2, so let's go to 0.15, and let's go to our light, make that 1.05, get a little more highs out of it. There we go. Cool. So now that's it. So now we're pretty much set up, and um. It, Anytime I set up one of our products, I always sa save a Maya file in the same directory. So uh, I always have that uh, particular object set up and ready to go, right? So you don't have to keep applying these shaders every single time. But as you can see, it's actually really fast. Once you get in there and do it a couple times, you just need to make sure that you, you pick the proper UDIM method. And for ours, it's ZBrush, the zero based. And then you need to make sure you allow or enable tessellation for this object. Right, and that's it. So now, just kind of, uh, just enjoy, have enjoy these products, have fun. Uh, tag us in what you post. We'd love to see what you do. And if you have any questions, looking these up. If anything's broken, anything's not working, just give us a buzz, and we will try and get back to you as soon as we can uh, and help you uh, get these guys running. So yeah, that's it.